Hello, I'm Professor Stephen Abbott. This is the third of my little series on printing, screen printing, flexo printing and gravure printing. Unlike the other two where I have animations, here I just have the page itself from the website. With gravure printing, we have, in the simplest case, the gravure roll or the analox roll, which has picked up ink one way or another. We're not concerned about that. We have the doctor blade, so coming up here now, we have cells nicely filled and scraped clean on the surface. We have the web coming in. We have some sort of deformable backing roll. And I'm going to talk about three phases. One, where the roll comes into the nip. Two, where it's in the nip. And three, where the separation takes place. And that's where the printing takes place. And the key question we all want to know is how much of the ink which is in the gravure cell will get transferred to the web? And the general answer is we don't know. This describes why we don't know. The theory I'm going to show here was developed with my colleague Professor Nick Kapoor at the University of Leeds. But after we developed it, uh, there's a wonderful paper by Professor Carvalho at uh, Rio de Janeiro, and I'll be showing one diagram from his paper. The paper is referenced at the bottom of this web page. The first part, stage one, is where the roller is coming into contact with the web. Nothing exciting is happening here. We have the cells, they're all full of ink, and the only thing that has to happen is that the air, which is here, has to be swept out. No big deal. In the middle, so in this second part, nothing whatsoever happens. We just have the ink cells in contact with the substrate. Now, obviously, if the substrate is absorbing, if it's paper, then the ink will start coming out. I'm concerned here only with non-absorbing substrates. Now let's get to the really tricky part, the separation. Where does the ink go? We've got the substrate pulling away from the roller and where the ink was touching the substrate, then it comes out. The ink which is going up there has to be replaced by air somewhere else. The air starts going into the cell as the ink is pulled out. As it separates more, the menisci of how the air is going into and displacing the liquid in the cell will form all sorts of strange shapes. And right towards the end of the process, the cell might be like this, of half empty, unsymmetrical, but you have a liquid bridge here. And the characteristic of a liquid bridge, it will spontaneously snap. When it snaps, you often get a satellite drop, which is a familiar misting problem in gravure printing. But the point is that you have this amount of ink up here, you have this amount of ink left in the cell, the liquid bridge which will snap. So the amount which ends up here depends on how these menisci have taken place. That in turn depends on whether the menisci are pinned to the edge. If they're really strongly pinned, then almost no ink will get swept out and you'll just get a tiny dot printed. If it's very weakly pinned, then it might zoom out and you might empty. The point is that it's very complex. Now, as I said, this is just a simple graphic. Let's look at the academic version of this. Here is the paper from uh, Cavallo. There is the cell. There's the substrate. He's pulling it out and you see that it's going in like that. You're starting to form this liquid bridge. It goes on more and at this extreme you've got a very narrow bridge which will break. So in this particular example almost nothing is printed. It'll snap and everything will go back in. The paper has many more diagrams. It's a very fine paper. But the point is that what I'm showing you there and what I was showing you in the website are very much related. This is how gravure printing works. This is why it's so complicated for us to predict how much gets deposited. Sorry about that, but that's the laws of physics.